Hi, day two at CR Space 2021. Today we're focusing on naval aviation topics. We're starting with General Atomics, getting an update on the EMOS program, as well as discussing the Sea Guardian UAV. Then we're talking j with Raytheon. And finally, the CMV-22B Osprey with Bell helicopters. Hi, good morning. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, Xavier. My name is Rolf Ziesing. I'm the uh, Vice President of Programs at General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems. All right, Rolf. What are the latest milestones for the uh, EMOS and AAG program? Yeah, the EMOS and AAG program, uh, we're just making fantastic progress. Um, as you know, or probably have seen, the, the Ford is at sea undergoing full ship shock trials. Uh, all reports are the equipment is working very well. Uh, we're expecting the, the third and final uh, uh, shock uh, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, uh, really proud to say that we have uh, uh, our team on board the ship supporting that, so um, we've got some uh, deck plate experience with that event, and uh, everything's going quite well. Um, of course, those shock trials uh, follow uh, more than a year of uh, uh, very intensive at-sea operations where the Navy's been putting the Ford uh, you know, through a series of tests, um, but really in addition to those tests, they made uh, use of the ship as a qualification platform, and uh, they've they've qualified uh, several hundred um, aviators uh, on that Ford. The Ford has uh, been the only carrier on the East Coast available for qualifications. So, getting a lot of uh, good uh, reps and sets on the equipment. Uh, we've got more than 8,000 cats and traps, uh, and everything's uh, working very well. All right. What about uh, on the uh, international front? Uh, there's a new aircraft carrier program in France and uh, there's been discussions between France and the US regarding uh, the launch and recovery systems. What can you tell us about it at this stage? Yeah, so um, uh, we're very excited to support the French PANG program. Uh, they have uh, uh, done a trade study and selected the EMOLS and AAG technology uh, that will support the aircraft launch and recovery on the PANG carrier. And so we uh, just continue to support them uh, in, in their efforts to uh, uh, take the journey and uh, support the new design of their new aircraft carrier. All right, and what's next for the program? Well, it's, it's a busy program. Uh, CVN-79, the uh, John F. Kennedy is in the shipyard. Um, we've pretty much completed the um, delivery of all of our equipment for that ship, and, and we're supporting the shipyard and the Navy in in installing the uh, equipment on board the ship and getting into system light off. Uh, behind that is CVN-80, uh, and we're in uh, production activities for that. Of course, in the shipyard, the CVN-80 is, uh, you know, much further behind in the construction. Uh, and uh, CVN-81, uh, we're, we're expected to be under contract uh, in the next year to support the production of CVN-81. So, very busy time for us uh, supporting the, the production. Um, of the uh, new carrier components, but in addition to that, uh, of course now the Ford is, is a, uh, a ship in the fleet and CVN-79 will be uh, joining the fleet soon and so we're looking forward to the uh, sustainment activities in support of the operating fleet with uh, spares and repairs and uh, obsolescence management. Um, so it's uh, really at the front end of, of what will be uh, you know, an exciting times in terms of fleet support for us. All right, Ralph, okay. thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. It's nice to see you. Hi, good morning, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, good morning, my name is uh, Peter Yell. I work for General Atomics. I do a Navy Marine Corps strategic development, uh, maritime related uh, work with the MQ-9B. All right, Peter, what's that scale model behind us? Uh, just what I mentioned, the MQ-9B, so it's a Sea Guardian uh, basic configuration. It's in the ASW, anti-submarine warfare configuration. It's got four anti-submarine warfare uh, sonar buoy dispensing pods. It's also got an integrated anti-submarine -war uh, warfare processor, as well as all the other um, packages within the MQ-9 to include the uh, Lynx radar. That big radar in the, in the middle is a uh, maritime radar, about 200 nautical mile range. 
as well as all, all the other sensors you're familiar with, uh, ELAN sensors, uh, raw gear capability, and so forth. So that's the basic package for a Sea Guardian. Have you tested the aircraft in this configuration we yet? We've tested the aircraft in a prototype fashion, so we've taken and modified uh, our current MQ-9A, uh, put all, all these systems on the MQ-9A, uh, we went out and tested drop sonar buoys, track submarines, and we're able to uh, work the systems uh, independently and integratedly. Uh, that airplane is brand new. This is a brand new production aircraft that we just started building. Uh, we have several of them already built, and we're incorporating those systems, and we'll be flying it probably later this year for the first time in an ASW configuration. So the MQ-9B is our earmarked aircraft platform for ASW operations. What other missions can the Sea Guardian conduct besides the ASW? Good question. So it's a multi-domain aircraft, right? So we have the ability to uh, detect uh, SIGINT, so signals of interest, uh, passively, as well as provide that radar capability for painting targets, processing those targets, and pushing those targets via Link 16 or through the GCS and eventually TTNT. Uh, multi-domain anti-submarine capability that I've talked about at the beginning of the interview. So we can drop sonar buoys, track submarines, take those tracks, push them on Link 16 to other players. So we recently did an exercise with the Navy where we did that. We were able to uh, track a submarine, build a surface and subsurface track, and then pass it to offboard systems to include uh, destroyers, LCS, at P8 and uh, MH60 Romeos. So we've demonstrated that capability. So man un unmanned teaming kind of stuff. And uh, what's next for the program? Uh, continuing to expand the program, get this new airplane out to the fleet, uh, demonstrate its full capability of the integrated systems. Uh, it's got a much longer endurance than our current MQ-9A model, so show its endurance capability. It's also an all-weather airplane, so we can operate that airplane in a lot of different environments. Uh, it's the first uh, UAS that's been certifiably designed, so it has a onboard detect and, and avoid capability, so it can fly with other assets without having to have a chase or uh, a restrictive you know, flight path. So that's another capability that current UASs don't have. So it's important that we get that out to the, the fleet so that people understand that this is a real file and fly aircraft, both right. nationally and internationally. All right, Pete, thank you very much. That's it. All right, thank you. My name is CJ James. I'm the Executive Technical Advisor for Raytheon uh, Intelligence and Space. All right, CJ, what do we have here? So this is uh, the Joint Precision Approach and Landing System, known as JPALS. Uh, it's currently deployed on the Navy's carriers and the Marine Corps L-Class ships. Uh, first deployed in June of 2018 with the Marines and just recently made its first deployment with the Navy. And it's, uh, it's used for all F-35s, uh, Bs and Cs, and it's also on the F-35A that is uh, flown by the Air Force. Uh, what does it do for the pilot? So j is a precision landing system that actually brings the pilot all the way down to a 20 centimeter square on the deck. So if you think about being, you know, bad weather, middle of the night, high sea state, uh, you start getting the JPAL signal at 200 nautical miles. At, at 60 nautical miles, you start getting a two-way signal. At 10 nautical miles, it puts you into the precision approach, and then it brings your aircraft all the way down to the deck. And so it's a, it's a, it's a safety factor for the pilots, especially when you get into high sea states. Uh, it works in all weather conditions, and, and it's been an incredible addition uh, for the F-35 Bs and Cs. Do any uh, international navies, foreign navies, use JPALS? Uh, yes, they do. So the system is installed on the Italian Cavour, and it is also installed on the Queen Elizabeth. And um, there's more coming down the pike. Uh, Japan is very interested in this, and we've had initial conversations with the French and with the Koreans. And so I think as, uh, as it expands and as it becomes better known. I think we'll see anybody who has a, a aircraft carrier type of ship uh, will be coming to JPALS because it'll, it allows for interoperability. So right now, you know, the UK, 
that are trained in JPLs could land on a U.S. ship and, you know, U.S. could land on a U.K. ship or the Italian ship uh, seamlessly. And uh, domestically, what's next for the program? Will other airframes be fitted with uh, JPLs? So the plan right now is for the CMV-22 to be outfitted for JPLs. That's the, the COD replacement for the Navy. Uh, once it's on the CMV-22, then it's an easy transition to the MV-22. And then there's also studies being done for the F-18, for the Super Hornet, and the EA-18G. So I think from a, from a Navy perspective, the carrier air wing will be outfitted with JPALs in the future. Uh, and then from there, the aircraft that are on the L-Class ships as well. And then after that, we're looking at an expeditionary version to take ashore so that the aircraft can land with JPALs ashore as well. All right, CJ, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Good afternoon. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Carl Forza. I'm manager with Global Military Sales and Strategy at Bell. All right, Carl, what do we have behind you? This is the uh, CMV-22 Osprey, which is the newest variant of the V-22 Osprey family. Uh, it was previously in service with the MV-22, which is the Marine Corps variant, the CV-22, which is the Air Force Special Operations variant, and this is the carrier onboard delivery variant. So add some capabilities uh, to it for the needs of the U.S. Navy uh, to assist their operations of their uh, carrier battle groups. So uh, from the baseline Marine configuration, this aircraft adds uh, considerably added range. So 1,150 nautical miles range, so it can supply uh, Navy carriers offshore with the uh, uh, supplies, personnel that needs to conduct operations at sea. What's the latest news with the program? So the latest news is that three aircraft detachment of CMV-22s is uh, going on operational deployment with the Navy Carrier Battle Group. So this will be the first uh, operational situation where they're going to be operating on an extended time period. Uh, during uh, operational work with the U.S. Navy, keeping sure that uh, that battle group is equipped with uh, all the resupplies and personnel it needs while it's deployed. How many airframes are you going to produce eventually? So right now the program of record for the U.S. Navy is 48 aircraft. And so right now they've outfitted one squadron and uh, pretty soon they'll be able to uh, replace the entire existing C-2 Greyhound fleet, which was the legacy aircraft, will be completely replaced with CMV-22s. Last but not least, have other navies globally shown interest for this aircraft? Well, Bell and Boeing are pursuing ongoing international sales efforts. Uh, for active campaigns, I'd recommend you talk to the uh, U.S. Navy International Program Office. All right, Carl, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good afternoon.